What's going on everyone? Austin Hargit here, aka Dr. Weld, host for Weld.com. I've been a welder for the past 14 years, an educator for the past five, as well as being a CWI, and I just love talking about welding, right? We're gonna go over a little bit of a lesson today, uh, and this lesson's gonna kind of be an entryway to all the future lessons that we're gonna go on. We're gonna step it up as we go. Uh, you'll find this lesson to be on YouTube most likely, and then you'll be able to check out all the other cool lessons that we have that are escalating up. Uh, in tiers as far as difficulties in our weld app. So don't forget to check out that weld app. On today's lesson, we're going to be doing a little TIG welding, right? This is going to be an introduction to TIG welding. We're going to talk about striking the arc with TIG, whether we're doing it at high frequency, maybe we're doing a scratch dart or lift dart. We're going to go over a couple different machine setups on how we can go about setting up for TIG, as well as some of the consumables and how to get the torch set up right. So hey, let's get to it. Right, the next thing that I want to really kind of just dive into is I'm sure that as you're getting into school or you're trying to find out uh, what works best for you or what you need as far as a tick torch and the setup. I'm going to show you a few of the options here in my shop. We've got three different style of hoses here, different types of uh, flex heads and cups and back caps and everything like that. We'll start with this torch here. This is your single hose 150 amp tick torch. Okay. It is just one hose. This is the gas hose as well as the inside has the copper uh, power cable on the inside as well. So you get your gas, you get your power. Uh, the only thing is the end of it, you're going to have kind of this smaller fitting. This small fitting really does go to pretty much everything. However, if you go up in torch sizes, it gets a little bit bigger. And what I have here is what's called an adapter block. Now this block will allow you to run on any type of machine uh, via scratch start, which means you have to physically touch the steel for it to kind of get lit and to get going. This is probably the most common torch as far as in the field, uh, especially uh, if you're not in the shop or, or if you're just getting started in school. Uh, this, this setup is really common for beginners and things like that. That's your single hose. TIG torch. This is a 150 amp torch. This is also a 150 amp torch, but you'll notice it's split. This is the gas hose here, and this is the power cable. So instead of them all being in one, uh, they kind of have it split up. And again, this is going to be uh, an advantage for typically for heat. This torch may get a little hotter than this torch, being that these things are separated, and this has a little bit more insulation around the cable. And you'll notice the ends of it, this goes into the machine, and this goes to your regulator or to a gas, an extension of a gas hose, whatever it may be. Whereas this one, the gas and the power is all in one, these two are separate. So depending on what machine you're using, it's gonna be what the torch you're gonna to wanna to get. This one also has a valve on the backside to turn your gas on and off from the torch. This one does not. It has no valve back here. It actually has the valve further down the line right here, where you can open and close your gas further down. I prefer to have a valve on the back, but sometimes it's nice and you'll realize that sometimes that valve can kind of get in your way uh, and you can even accidentally shut your gas off with that valve being back there just by putting too much pressure on the back of it. And then over here we have a, a much bigger style torch, okay? This is going to be your 200 amp torch. It's a little heftier, right? Okay. And this one's kind of similar to both of these and this is because of what machine it hooks up to the gas is all run all through through the inside of this cable as well as the lead but here towards the end of the connection it splits because the machine has a quick connect for the gas and for the power so this is a bigger torch I also have a little remote switch on it this remote switch is going to allow me to turn the arc on and turn the arc off and again that kind of goes hand in hand with the machine uh, so I don't actually have to touch the metal with that with the high frequency start in this little remote switch here whereas these guys here they're going to be both scratch starts or lift art kind of machines uh, to hook up to and you have to physically touch the steel in order to initiate the arc so we're going to get a closer look at a few of these and then we're going to go over kind of all the torch head styles that we can also have too here's the single hose one hose with the gas on the inside with this adapter block here, okay? 
This little fitting right here is what connects to a lot of the parts, uh, but this is the adapter block that we will actually clamp your stinger to to give it power. Here we have the split hose with no valve on the back. So we got our double power cable, or double power and gas. Unlike this style, we have a dense connector here, as well as your valve to open and close your gas right here with a little bit of extra length of gas hose. So obviously those two connections are very different and will run differently. This one typically will run straight to your argon and then your stinger, which has the same connection as this, will hook onto that to give it power. Where this doesn't need a stinger and plugs right into your machine. Now we have the 200 amp torch with the hot start remote. Okay, it's a single piece torch as well with the remote that runs down with it. And here on the other end, you'll see it's a little lengthier. You can see it's got a different actually style connector than both of those, as well as having a quick connect for the gas and a remote to tie into because it needs to, since we have the remote on the handle, we've got to be able to read it. And that's gonna hook up to that machine there. And we're gonna go over how to set up these style torches on these two machines here in a minute. All right, let's talk a little bit about our TIG torch setups. I've got a couple different torches here. This one is a fixed head. This one's a flex head and this one's a flex lock. So we've got different style torches here. Uh, this one is for a mini rig. This is what you would consider a, if you look right here, you can see RF-17, that is the series of torch. You can actually change out this bit right here to fit these torches with a different setup. But this is running into a series nine torch. This torch, even though it has a big old crazy gas lens on it, runs smaller size gas lens, collets, back caps, everything on it is for a smaller style torch. So for example, this is the gas lens that you would run compared to say a standard gas lens, right? That would fit a series 17 torch, series nine, series 17. So make sure you're paying attention to the torches in the series. Uh, again, this is what like a mini, what I refer to as a, like a mini rig. Uh, and again, this is kind of neat because the flex lock here, you can spin this head in any direction that you need and then lock it in place and then it's locked into that fixed position to depending on whatever angle that you'll be working your torch at. And you can interchange these parts. You don't need to be running the big cup. If you're running some aluminum, you may switch to the collet body style with a small standard cup. The numbers on the cup also have a significance. The size in millimeters is the size of the diameter of the hole in millimeters, right? So five is five millimeter hole right there. Same thing for this one, this is for your for your gas lens here, this would screw into your gas lens and this is a seven. So you can see that the seven is bigger than the five, right? Bigger number, bigger cup, right? So now that's the series nine torch with a flex lock. Now we're moving to a series 17 with a flex head. This is a weld craft torch. I like this one because the handle screws on, doesn't slide on. It's got a valve on the back, but it gives you a lot of room back here. You'll notice that you can get different styles of caps too. You can either have the button cap, the medium cap, which this one's beat up, or the long cap, or what we like to call the rooster tail. So you can have any one of those. And again, with the same similarities to this setup, this one even has a smaller size collet. This collet it was, is what holds your tungsten in. These collets are twisted and messed up, but I don't have any new ones. so. These are your two different collets. This one fits this torch, and this one fits this normal standard 17, right? So be sure you're working with that. Now, same thing with the gas lenses. This is the collet body style where the gas comes out of these holes. We can unscrew that. Same thing with our standard size cup. Grab our gas lens. It usually comes with an insulator. It goes right here. I'm just missing that part. You can run it with or without it and then we can run our gas lens on top of that. You can tell a, a lot about it on the side of the torch here. For example, this one here, SR-17V. 
That 17 is the series, SR is series, 17 series. V stands for valve. And like this one that has the, has the F on it, the F stands for flex, okay? So if you don't see an F on the side of the torch, it is not a flex torch. Don't try to flex it, you'll break it, right? So keep that in mind. And then we'll move over to our, again, this is not a flex head torch. You can take these off. We've seen the standard size gas lens and cups now. There's the insulator that I was missing on the other torch, right? So this little part just goes right here so that this sits a little bit better. And then we can exchange that for some fancier, bigger cups. This is my go-to setup right here, the jumbo gas lens. These two gas lenses fit the same torch. One's just bigger than the other. Bigger gas lens means better coverage, right? So that's what I typically will try to stick with. That goes with a jumbo torch to go on it with a back cap, so on and so forth. These are some fancier Pyrex cups that can go on these torches. They're really good for freehanding. These bigger, bigger ones that are a little thicker, they can even walk on pipe as well. So you have a lot of options as far as a TIG torch. Take them into consideration. We're going to pick out what kind of torch that you want uh, and what kind of setup you have for the gas hose. It really kind of goes down to a little bit of preference and a little bit of what kind of machine you're working with. But all those torches and all those hoses, they can all make this same, same style weld. All of them. Every single one of them can make the same weld. So keep that in mind.